Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the GBYWN Australia podcast. I am once again your host, Aston Crude. This is my fifth podcast of the week. I've been very busy trying to play a bit of catch up on uh, interviews that I've had lined up for some time and um, just, you know, getting back into the swing of things. Uh, so I thought I'd get a, a few interviews done this week. We've already heard from the Suburban Nightmare Dark Ice in his three-part interview series. But here today, finally, we get you back. Former WZWA Backyard Champion, current ICWS Junior Heavyweight Champion. I'm talking about Big Red, Ryan Tate. Yep, that is me. Big I, Red. And I forgot to yeah. mention Tag Team Champion. You know, yeah, I, I was Tag Team Champion. Everyone out there, you know, no one really cares. It yeah. doesn't, you know. It's a fake championship in That's a true. fake sport in front of a fake crowd. No, they do mean something. They're good. Yeah, but in know. the end, they're still a piece of cardboard. Yeah, still so. cardboard. Yeah. Um, all right, Ryan. So I guess last time we left off, we were um, we had talked about your ICWS career. Um, we'll probably get to the new ICWS at the end of this one. Um, but here today, we are talking about your time in the Warzone Wrestling Alliance. So I guess if you remember back to... Well, you're the encyclopedia. That is true. Which which show did Jack and uh, Antilochus wrestle on? It was Twisted Metal 6. Twisted Metal 6, 2012? Indeed it was. 2012. Jack Wallace and Antilochus had a showcase match. We've already heard what Dark Ice thought of the situation before uh, WCW had the ring built. But what were your thoughts on them? And did you think that, you know, they were telling the truth when they were saying they were getting the ring? Well, basically, I, I had actually seen their stuff when... Because I think it was Dan Zeppelin who had put up footage of them, and I was not fond of them at all. No, why no. not? I just didn't is think it, it looked trampoline. It, yeah, trampoline. Yeah. That's it. It did like nothing against the guys. Like when I when I finally did see them, and they wrestled on the solid surface, like like they blew everyone away. Like, yeah, they were like these guys are just naturally talented. Yeah, just, the tr- the trampoline just made you look crap. Like it just didn't uh, didn't appeal to me at all. It makes anyone look crap. Yeah, it really. does. It, yeah, it does. It's like, just. Uh... Yeah. It's a hard element to really uh, make people take seriously. Yeah, it's like when someone says, "Oh, we've got a we've got a backyard wrestling federation." It's like, "Oh, cool, cool. Show us, show us a link to your stuff. Show us your link, and you, they're on a trampoline." Yeah, it doesn't really. And the first thing you yeah. say is, "You guys should make a base and get yeah. out of the trampoline." Um, so okay, well, you're pretty impressed with the guys, and then they will start to talk about how, you know. We're getting a ring built. Um, what did you think? And then when you saw the picture of the ring go up, well, at first I thought it was all bullshit. Um, as I didn't you really, do I didn't, back yeah, yeah, as you do. You just don't believe it. It's like, like my my dad's getting a ring built. Fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's not. Like, yeah. there's no way. Yeah. And then next minute, there's a photo pop up on Facebook. All the guys are at the um some factory or something where the ring's getting built and the test tightening the ropes and stuff I'm like yeah. whoa okay here we go <laughs> like there's there, it, he's legit he's backing up what he's saying yeah and I was talking to Jack like uh, just talking about all oh, the ring and stuff that he messaged me like oh man putting the ring in today at home I'm like oh sweet show me a photo I'm like so keen can't wait so straight away were you like can I please be on the roster can oh. I please join well, originally I wasn't. Actually, I was. I said, "Can I be on the roster?" And they said, "Yeah," but I said I wasn't going to be there full time ah. because of the whole travel issues and getting out there. Um, but you as, changed your tune. Yeah, changed my tune because, as, as everyone knows now, I'm prob- I've been the majority of the shows. So yeah, that changed. Um, okay, so uh, around this time. You know, I feel like I'm repeating myself because <laughs> I just asked these questions yesterday. But around this time, I took over as Booker. Um, I, I didn't really know if you and I knew each other that well at this stage. I guess, you know, we, we knew each other. We, we hung out a bit yeah, at ICWS, yeah. but we didn't really know each other that well um, as we do these days. But what were your thoughts on me taking over as uh, the Booker? Well, I didn't really... I didn't really know what was going on. Cause first, I knew that Jack was running it. Then next week, I know oh, Aston's going to be running it. Okay, so as I know you had a his- you had the history with uh, X- XCW and how you ran things, and I remember you usually would talk about um, how you had I- how you- your ideas, how you used to be a booker there. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So 
Like he did like over like ten years of XCW, so he should know. He obviously this guy has to know what he's do- has that's know what he's talking about. So and it's not just XCW. Like, yeah, that's playing ex- with my figurines. Yeah, that's coming up with storylines on EWR and TEW, the booking games. Oh, okay. you know all oh, wow. those things like figurines, man. No, oh, sweet. They, that that helped me a lot. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I guess you know you weren't too phased by. Oh, no, I was thought, like, okay, this guy like he's. He's done booking before. He's he probably he knows just a bit. Like apparently, you, I remember sometimes you said you you wrote like a a book on book on your booking for like I tried something. to something like that. Yeah. So I was like, okay, jump on the bandwagon. This can be fun. Yeah. So just roll with it. So your debut match you're against Mykonos for a contract with WCWA. First time in the ring. What do you reckon? It's you can't really describe what it feels like. Like the, the transition between the base and the ring because just. The difference is you got ropes, so yeah, like the ring is just like like so like doesn't hurt at all when you bump it. It's the using using the ropes was a bit different because I've never because I've never had to worry about running somewhere and then coming back. Mm. <laughs> Plus, you know, yeah. whipping them into the corner, yeah, whipping that into the corner, element. jumping off the corners. I did that in that match, which was pretty crazy. So I don't think I have I don't think I've done that since though. <laughs> And usually one of your trademark moves was the jumping clothesline yeah, off the that base. Was, that, and yeah. now you're thinking, shit, I can't really do that much anymore. Unless you do it running off the apron. But Yeah, do it running off the apron. I did one off the ropes in that match. And gotcha. All right, well, uh, the following show is Road to Ruin. You face Dark Ice. Oh. Um, you know, this This is going back, you know, mid to late 2012. Uh, memories of that little match you guys had and... Of course, the kickoff of the feud with you and Mykonos. Yep, safe to say I was pretty scared shitless because he's big. He's big dude. Didn't know what to expect going in, into it. But honestly, safe safest guy to work with. No, knows his shit. No, he's like, a big teddy yeah, bear. Big Ted, big teddy bear. Um, I think it's just that intimidation factor, really. Um, yeah, we had a good little match. Um, Ice obviously over. Uh, uh, me over by DQ. Ice not getting pinned or anything, so he still looks strong. Yeah. Uh, and then the whole thing with Mitch afterwards choking me out just to to kick off the feud. kick off the feud more and build it up. So then we go into that the next match, which I was really looking forward to. Just really excited at everything that I found out was going on. Yeah. So. Well, I felt like you needed to work with someone like a Mykonos to elevate you and help you improve. And yeah. so now the next part of this podcast, we talk about that feud with Mykonos and your thoughts on that feud. Mm-hmm. Um, and what it did for you as a performer in WCWA and, you know, in general. Yeah, because I was like, because at this stage I was still relatively, relatively new to yarding and just made the transition to the ring. So I need, so me versus someone of uh, a higher caliber like Mykonos, I think it really, really helped me, like character-wise, just building, building up and actually getting more of a character act. I did was doing promos in WCWA and I hadn't really... Um, Solidify what my character was really about in ICWS that much, mm-hmm. and um, we went out and had three great matches. And like by the end of it, because I was getting really over, like is that especially. including the frostbite match? Including the frostbite yeah. match, like three good matches. And like, I remember we went to like a when it came to the um, we had to have the title match. That like, my I went to an EPW show and I was talking to like Antilochus and Brian Lowe and they were just saying, "Oh man, like we like you bet like we hope you win in the title, man." It's, and I was like, "Whoa, Jesus!" Mm. <laughs> like, I'm getting like so over with my peers, like they really want me to win. Like they're getting so emotionally invested. Yeah, in what's going on? Did so the first match you went over, didn't you? No, the first match was Frostbite. Mitch went oh, over. Mitch went con- over con- in that one, match, but yeah. the the second one. Yeah, second match I made him. Pass out. It was a submission match. Ah, uh, gotcha. Yeah. Then we did did went for the whole hand sh- the handshake thing after the match. Got super kicked in the face, and then just and you then, see that that you see that image of me at the camera like this isn't over, and then we go into the third and final match. Yeah. So yeah. you know, before the Kevin Owens John Cena handshake, followed yeah. by the attack, we already did it. Yeah, they're basically copying us. Like, yeah, they we, totally we can we totally. can infringe on copyright. They totally <laughs> saw that. Um, so from there we go to a two out of three falls match. I mean the, these matches, just the progression of improvement from one to another was tremendous. And your thoughts on the two out of three falls match for the championship? You know this is the biggest match in your career. Not only like was it like such a big match, like we had to follow that stairway to hell with chaos, like 
oh. being lit on fire. And I was just freaking out. I was like, man, like we need to follow that. That was amazing. And like my head, my head, like my head game. Like it was just like uh, I didn't know what was what what was going on. Then just, how are you going to be able to talk? How that? am I going to the focus? I couldn't focus on what was what I had to do because of the, everything I've just seen. But um, somehow we went out there and we did it, and um, we got like crowd involved. Everyone was going crazy for what we were doing, um, and it was like just a great like end to that feud. I think how I had to feel, I had to follow that in the main event <laughs> against Jack. We had the stairway to hell, and then you and Mykonos is just like shit. Incredibly difficult to follow. Um, so just to wrap up the Mykonos part. Um, you know, what does Mykonos mean to the yarding career, in quotation marks, of, of Big Red Ryan Tate? Oh, I think he was just, like, I'm not going to say, like, he helped, he helped me, like, just, la- like, launch into, like, where, I, pretty much where I am now, because, like, char- character-wise, because he helped, he helped me build into such a strong character for everyone to be, um, like, be behind because as, as a face, um, plus I think yeah. your wrestling ability really yeah wrestling improved. ability really improved like helping me because I knew how to like what things I needed to do what things I didn't need to do and how to incorporate those things into a match. And I think Mitch should look back on 2012 uh, and be very proud of what he accomplished not only with you but then following that he had two great matches with Antilicus to finish out the year. So hats off to Mitch. You know he he was on fire in 2012. Um, so around this time, I is it, I don't know which event it was, Lila debuts as your manager. Revenge, 2012. Revenge, okay. This is when you have the uh, not-so-good match with the Great Shinigami. No, my first Great Shinigami at uh, Christmas Carnage. What was I, it Christmas Carnage? I versed, oh, uh, re- I versed Rex, Rex Regan Rex that Regan, Regan, my bad, <laughs> sorry. I've got yeah. the timeline mixed up. It's yeah, very right. hard to remember all yeah, this yeah. stuff. Okay, so she debuts when you wrestle Rex Regan. Yep. Um, why did this come about? Did you, had you guys been talking about her possibly being your manager? Um, I think we were talking about it for a while. And um, I don't know what was going on. I think I, I said in the thread, I was like, oh, you got, I was like, hey guys, like, it's trying to get, like, trying to make her feel like, oh, now I have to do it. Because <laughs> everyone's saying, oh, yeah, you should be a manager. You should, you'd be awesome at it. And, um, Somehow that worked, and she agreed, and she came out. She got great pop, and yeah, it was cool. Like to have my girlfriend actually involved, like yeah. instead of just having, instead of just be, knowing that she has to just, oh yeah, come to the show, sit there, watch Ryan do his thing, yeah, well, watch she, everyone else do their she thing. She'd been coming yeah. to ICWS ever since you debuted. Yeah, because she got me into it, and I, I was feeling like I'm giving something back to her to get into it. Yeah, so. and that's yeah. that's good of you, and yeah. you know, Lily has been without a doubt the yeah. most reliable girl that we've had involved in WCWA when most of them couldn't commit she was always there and she's still always there each and every show and she does a great job um, so kicking off from here we start a, a few with Rex Regan so now I will bring up this match with Shimaga- Shinigami yep. I watched it for the first time since it happened uh, what was it last week? Week before? About two weeks, two or three weeks ago. Two or three yeah. weeks ago. Oh my god! I just it just did not work. I think at the time, and you'd like, wrestled him before. Yeah, I had, I had wrestled him one time before when he wasn't the masked character. It was in like in a fatal four way at IC Dub. Yeah. So we did a couple of things there. It worked well. Um, but um, yeah, like I think at the time, like I thought it was a good match. So did he. Um, but then watching it, watching it back now, it's like, oh god, what a travesty! <laughs> <laughs> like there was so many things that could have been done better. So like, do, like trying to do a freaking fisherman off the ropes when they're not really as great. Um, trying to whisper in the wind off the apron and landing like on the top of my head. Yeah, and then gave a little I receipt think, after. I so. think when I, I yeah. think when I looked at it, that match yeah. back after yeah. all these great matches you've been having, I mean, even yeah. the first match with Rex Regan was quite good. Yeah, probably one of my favourite matches too. Like, yeah, that was a good match yeah. too. Um, but you know, to have so many great matches, um, to start off with, to have a bad match, um, you know, bit of a setback. Yeah. But well, the kind of, the kind of things happen. You have your good days, you have your bad days. It's just a natural thing that happens, really. Yep. Yeah. Um, so from there, uh, the Rex Regan feud kicks off. 
Um, it's all about respect, just like your feud with Mykonos was all about respect. Um, so your thoughts on this feud with Rex Regan, um, and you know, as we go to resolution, um, and what goes down there? Okay, so I don't really necessarily I don't necessarily like talking about the whole resolution thing. Um, it came up to the resolution. It's the whole respect thing. Uh, we've got access to all areas, and Rex Williams, the guest on it, comes out, says a couple of things. He has his ideas, and he ca- he said he said what he was going to say to me just before the segment. He said, "Oh, now I'm going to say this, say this, say this about Lila." I'm like, "Don't you fucking dare! Don't fucking say it!" Because so you told him not to say yeah, it. Yeah, I told him straight to his face not to say it. And knowing him, just goes goes in the ring. I'm I'm just waiting because I, I know I have to come out to my queue and then he says it says the whole thing and I could see like just over the corner where Lily was sitting and she was so upset you could tell like there's a dip there is a line with like getting heat and then being an absolute cunt like there is a line yeah like you can say some things and be like you get just just getting heat but if you want to say stuff like that you, know, you actually make someone feel bad about themselves yeah and feel very like inadequate then yeah but I was like really pissed off came out then we did the whole thing and to be honest I was I wasn't really feeling like up to wrestling him that day but I pretty buried that buried the hatchet because I don't really hold grudges that much um but uh and just for for fun I got Lily to chop the shit out of him at the start of the match yeah. so you could be good get a bit of revenge that match and we ended up having like one of the best one of my favorite favorite matches like probably my number one yeah honestly because the whole feud with chris like probably some most fun i've had ever like in yeah. yarding probably my favorite feud it was pretty good yeah. um and and i loved how um we've talked about this before about how your feud with mykonos is about getting his respect yeah. and then it, the feud with regan was about beating respect out of him yeah so you, your character is very much built on, you know, being a man of yeah. values and and all about respect. Being and respect, being respectful, being the role model yeah. to people. And then the whole, it's completely like the, the feud's completely flip the table when it comes to Rex Regan. Like it's instead of getting, like earning the respect, I'm teaching Chris to how, how to be respectful. Like and him being and the this, heel is, this is true to life yeah. at the time. Yeah, it was pretty. I true. mean, I guess yeah. as a booker, I'm booking this. I'm I'm, I'm you. Yeah, like I, I'm yeah. I'm booking myself as you. The situation yeah. that I was facing with Chris, he yeah. needs to show some bit more respect. So it's true to life. We're getting Ryan to to fill the role, <laughs> and um, some things have, you know, happened which um, were quite disrespectful for real. Yeah. Um, but in saying that, the matches, the three matches that you had were, were very good. Yeah. Um, yeah, the three matches probably, as I said, favorite ma- some of my favorite matches. Like we After had, Shock is the yep, following after show. After Shock, the respect match, yep. Um, basically, I quit match rules. Um, but instead of getting the guy to say, I quit, say, I respect you. It was such a physical match. Like, I think I did like a Death Valley driver off the top rope onto a door. Yeah, that um, was awesome. That's always in the highlight reels. Yeah, it's always in the highlight reels. <laughs> um, uh, L- hell, Lily even took a, a punch, <laughs> and <laughs> she just right. and she just like like died. Like just she collapsed. just just collapsed. Yeah. Like um, probably one of the best. Things. I thought I thought he just did it like out of um, like actually full on hit her, and I was like, oh, what the fuck is going on? Like, <laughs> but then I found out like Lily's like, oh yeah, I just I took a punch. Yeah, that was sick. Like, um, um, so after shock. Um, well, are there any more thoughts on the feud with Regum as you ended it? Um, I don't think we could have done it any better than we did, to be honest. Like, it was just everything it needed to be. Um, yeah. It's just, you guys definitely had uh, chemistry, just like you and Mykonos did. Yeah. Um, like, so like Chris, from there... I was just going to say, like, like Chris being like, um, like, he has that whole attitude, but he's, like, so talented. Like, he can put on a good match. Like, yeah. He can have a good match with anyone. Yeah, good match with anyone. Um, so the same show, another significant thing happens. You join the Rebellion. Yeah. Um, as Brian Lowe and Tillikas are feuding with myself and Alex Stone along with Dan Zeppelin. The new uh, newly formed Elite Alliance has been you know, running roughshod over the, 
the Federation at the time and to even up the odds of rebellion looked for someone else to help them out. The man all about respect, Ryan Tate joins. Who else? Um, was this my idea? I think it was. I think we were talking about the... Um, I think we actually talked about the whole idea um, at, I think it was like Christmas Carnage, about me joining the rebellion. So we okay. went with that. So um, it happens. What are your thoughts on your... Well, it's a short, quite a short stint, really, in the rebellion. I think it was three shows you were... Yeah, it was like three shows. It was like, wait, for another one. I think it was... Uh, yeah, it was three shows. So, like, yeah. uh, so you, you join Aftershock, you're there for Wham Bam. Hard Time, Hard one, time and two, one and Two. And then, and then Autumn Brawl. Oh. Well, you know what happens there, yeah. which we'll get to. So, yeah, so your, your thoughts on your time with Rebellion? I thought it was great like at the, at the start of it, because no I don't think anyone really expected me coming out. It's like, oh, well, suddenly Ryan's a part of this feud now. Yeah. Okay. Now, so we've got three on three. This, is gonna be, this should be good. Oh, like, it makes sense of the whole, like... Aston and the Elite Alliance, like they're in power, they're disrespecting every single person in so the Federation. So who's gonna no, who's right. gonna who's gonna join Rebellion? Like the man, all that respect. So I think the character development so the, far the, has been awesome. Yeah, like all like first it was with Mitch and the respect, then it was the whole disrespect and respect thing with Rex, and then just the whole it just molded very very well. <laughs> yeah. So when I came into it, just. Did that, and then we went to Wham Bam. Um, then there was a bit... You could see that there was a bit of tension going on within Rebellion. Like, at the end of that main event, like... Or at the, actually, go back to the start of the main event, Ryan's like, you know, the guys that need me out here, they can win the titles off of you two. Just go yeah. backstage. It was a tag team yeah, match. Yeah, tag team match both the titles. Because yeah. you and Alex were backyard and heavyweight champion at the time. Yeah. And at the end of the match... Um, uh, Antilochus and Lowe got beat down, I came out, those guys, you guys scattered, and they just dropped the blame on me. It's like, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> so, um... So, yeah, yeah the plants was... The, 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 sorry, the seed was planted. Yep. Not the plants were seeded. No, don't. The seed was planted, um, and from there, we move on to... Uh, what did you do at Wham Bam? I versed Dynamo because I was supposed to verse Dan Zeppelin. Was it for the uh, Aussie title? It was, was for it? the Aussie title. Oh, okay, so we're just giving was, Dynamo. Yeah, Dynamo over. stepped out of the, the, the some four way he was having for the GBYWN World Hardcore Tournament, and then he versed me instead. Okay. I don't remember that match at all. I did. I did. It was, <laughs> was alright. Yeah, it was alright. Uh, Cab, Cab was dead, but I liked it. So did Monet, so. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay, so from there, uh, another big significant event happens. Is this uh, Hard Time 1? Yeah. You hard defeat. Time. Rockstar Alex Stone to become the backyard champion. I don't know what uh, my mindset was at the time. Um, so I think originally Alex was supposed to be winning that. Al Alex was supposed to be holding onto the backyard title for some time, but it was like in his third title defense, he was losing it. At the time, I can't quite remember clearly, but there were plans for Alex to be Aussie champion. Um, but then there were also plans for Dynamo to be become backyard champion so I don't know where you fit into it somehow I don't know what the reason was but we decided to put the backyard championship on you uh, maybe uh, maybe Alex said to me I don't know I can't remember maybe he said to me you should win it I don't know didn't bother me backyard champ fuck yeah so it's your first singles championship um, you know your thoughts on um, on wrestling Alex that day and winning the championship and then of course the, uh, the clothesline heard all around the world oh yes um, Alex and I always, have always had like chemistry whatever match we've ever been in just just instant chemistry we had such a great match so happy with it um, and help like Lily Lily got involved like Aston came out after a hit Alex in the head with a keyboard Aston comes running out not and, thinking in, she's yeah, gonna just, do shit yeah just oh, keeps man. coming out it's like don't cross don't fucking cross Lila because <laughs> she just turns around and gives you a freaking clothesline close out of line. nowhere and that then later line. on oh my god yeah then later on on grass. YouTube uh, MC Cruel posted that was a sick lie lariat I'm like that's that's, that's the name that's yes. the name that's it oh she just gave me there were no yeah. plans for her finishing move to yeah. be a clothesline but because of yeah. how good that first one was from then on the lie lariat dropped you on your fucking ass man. yeah and that winded the awesome. shit out of me um, that hurt so bad but it was awesome. Yeah. Helped it was me. worth it. Yep, yeah. it was good because it helped me towards the championship like managers supposed, manager's supposed to be doing. So, yeah. It was like, it felt good because just 
just being able to be a champion and just feel like I've been earned you that spot. Feel so, like your, yeah. your hard work. Over yeah, hard the work past has paid off. Six like, months yeah. has totally paid off, and well, eight months or so. Yeah. Um, so many great matches, great feuds. You know, this is now your third feud within the space of you know eight months. So many things going from one thing to the next with you. And um, the next thing that did come up was uh, your first title defense against Jack Wallace at Hard Time 2, Day 2, the following week. So one-of-a-kind show, Hard Time 2, having uh, two separate hard times uh, Within in the a space week, of a it? week. Yep. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, thoughts? Because you main evented. Yeah, main, first main event. I was uh, I was actually, like, really nervous about that. Like, I think I messaged, like... Most of the guys who have been in main events, like, ah, oh, what, what do you really bring to the, what do you bring to the table when you're in a main event? They're like, just wrestle the same match you re- usually would. I'm like, oh, oh okay, oh, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> well, thanks for the help. Um, yeah, I think it was Mitch. I, I messaged. I was like, oh, what's the, what, what do you do in the, usually in a main event? It's like, oh, just wrestle the same match. Like, okay, okay, <laughs> thanks for the help. <laughs> um, but that yeah. was a good match. Yeah, it was a good, great match. Like, because Jack and I, we wrestled in ICWS before, and those matches just didn't seem. No, to they didn't click. seem. They didn't seem to click. I don't know why. Maybe, maybe just in a, maybe you're an experience, experience dealing yeah. with a yeah. more inexperienced guy. Yeah, and then like Jack was building up, but then we got, came to this match, and then we just clicked. Everything went well. How we even did the whole like I think it was like first submissions count anywhere match in WA or something like that wasn't it? I think so. Yeah, something, something, like, like, that. something like that. And we like did like we used it to our advantage. We went we went back backstage down to like the balcony and people watching TV and like getting DDT on the floor and getting put in the boss like a half crab and stuff. It was pretty cool. Um, yeah, that was the first time we'd really uh, gone back like back back, back like properly backstage because yeah. that's the um, thing I wanted really wanted to incorporate like. Just do the whole anywhere. Use anywhere. Like, like, yeah. And see how far we could push it to where we could, what we could do. Yeah. So the follow, so b- before this all, this this big thing happens at Autumn Brawl. Um, when do you take me aside and pitch me this idea to turn heel on the rebellion and join the Elite Alliance? I think that was the same show we we talked about me joining the rebellion because we, I think it was you, myself, and Alex. We were talking. We we're like. We were just saying, oh, like, you could just do this whole thing. I could join with Lo and Jacob. And then, like, later on, I'm just build up, build up, build up. And then have, like, this match. And I think you were talking about, like, oh, it's just, like, the whole Hogan thing. Like, Hogan's, like, this comes out. He's, like, he's the guy. Like, comes out. And then comes out. He's going to save the day. Save yeah. the day. Boom. Leg drop to Sting or leg R- drop Randy to Randy Savage. Randy yeah. Savage, yeah. And then and, everyone's um, just, like... Like completely blown away. Yeah. Yeah. With what's going on, and like the idea was, um, it was like war games, wasn't it? Yeah, it was yeah, war, war games. War games. Uh, when your entrance was supposed to happen, you didn't come out. Yeah. And you portrayed yourself yeah. as being attacked backstage. That comes Lily, Lily came yeah. out. He's been beaten up backstage. Blah blah blah. Then you come out. You're yeah. stumbling and all over the point, place. At this point, Lowe's handcuffed to the bottom rope. He can't help. Jacob, it's a it's a free on one. At Jacob's this point. just been powerbombed through a table. Yeah, um, all this is going down, and then uh, Antilochus is fighting back, and then in He's comes fun- Big Red. He, he, like you know, come Jacob's asking, "Oh, get in the quick, get in the ring." I'm just stumbling around, You're like, "Oh, quick, get in- Antilochus, get in the ring, man! Come on, need your help. Get in the ring, crack him over the head with a fucking chair, wiped him out, wiped him out. No one, like, no one saw it coming. Like, and then everyone's just like, Big Red's in the lead alliance. Yep. Lily can't believe it. Well, sorry, Lila can't believe it. Um, Lowe's just like seething as he's handcuffed to the bottom rope. Until this is laid out and just and the then... nail in the coffin just dans up and picks him up. Dual light tube chop over the skull. And you got a bit of heat from that I light did. tube shot. I did. What was the what um, was the I think it was the whole I don't know what it was, I think some I think maybe Antilica was just like looking straight up at me or something or or was, I don't know the way you hit him. I weigh him. It was like right across the face, like not like down like the head. It was across. It was like across the face, and yeah. I, I can Im- I can see all the way. No, I got the heat from that. Like it was so dangerous to do. Well, the reason why they surrendered the match was because yeah. we were threatening to hit him in yeah. the head with the the light tube, and yeah. Lowe's finally surrendered, but then just 
just to be extra cunty. We just still, we did, still it anyway. did it anyway. Still did it anyway. And what a great way to turn heel. Yeah. I mean, to do the a bastardly act like that, to threaten uh, yeah. Lowe to that we're going to hit his partner in the head with a light tube and then just do it anyway. Yeah. So you couldn't have turned heel any stronger. We planted the seeds with this, with uh, Rebellion complaining that you didn't come out and help them. We had a little Access All Areas segment where... Um, Alex Stone and I said to you that you were just their little errand boy and, you know, you need to think about where your career's headed and all that. So I think it really worked out quite well. Yeah, it certainly did. I was really, really stoked with it. And I'm actually, it was actually such a refresher for me because now I was thinking, now I get to be a bad guy. This is going to be great. <laughs> yes. So something a bit different. I mean, it's kind of like when you're at the height of your babyface run. You're, yeah. Uh, you know, this uh, this reminds me of when The Rock was at the height of his babyface run, and then suddenly he turned heel and joined the corporation. It's like That's what go. it reminded me of. Like, you yeah. could have had a, another six months as a babyface, but, you know, we decided at the height of your babyface run to turn your heel. So from there, we start this feud between... You know, the feud with Rebellion and the lead line still ongoing, because now you're feuding with the Rebellion. Um... So your thoughts on that that first match um, with Lowe, I believe it was the TLC match. Yep, and uh, I think it was like earlier in the day we had the whole, we had this promo which still isn't up on YouTube after so long. Luke, I'm talking, my name talking to you. Yeah, it's probably one of my favourite uh, promos I've ever done. Haven't even seen it. Um, where Lily came out halfway through the through the promo, got in the ring, completely forgot what she was going to say, and just starts cursing and threatening people and, and then dumps you and then dumps me <laughs> like take the slap to the face and then yeah she just says like she's still aligned with rebellion you're gonna get your ass kicked and then but then later on we had later the on. had the tlc um clusterfuck of a match but it was good for the things that we did do i think we just like the ring just got like hoarded with weapons and we didn't have any space to do anything yeah <laughs> But it came to the bit where we low and I were climbing up the ladder. And uh, Lily gets to the ring. She's got a chair. It's like, oh, she's going to hit Ryan. She's going to hit Ryan. No, she hits low. She like, hits low. She hits low. Takes, low, off, takes the off the jacket. Elite line. Elite line. Elite line. It's like I she loved... stood by her man. Yeah. Like... And I loved her earlier, just before we were going out there. Yeah. And she gave us, we all had a group hug. Yeah. And she was like so excited yeah. uh, by the fact that she was going to be joining the Elite Alliance. Um, I thought that was a quite a nice Yeah, moment. yeah. Um, so from there, we start this um, little side feud with you and Alex. It's yeah. not really a feud as in, you know, you guys are going at it each show. It's you guys keep screwing up in the name of yeah. of Elite Light Lions business. So I believe the match after this is uh, three-way. Yes, because I was supposed to... Originally, I was supposed to first Acid at that show. Ah, and this is when Acid had just come back, but he kept on missing every... He kept on missing shows. Every, every few shows here and there. I thought it was going to be cool, because what was going to happen was I was going to come out, like, you know what? Like, I can, I can beat you. Like, oh, hell, I'll put the title on the line, whatever. And then, obviously, win, and then make, make him look, like, really strong, like... Because with Acid's yeah. previous uh, yeah. alle allegiance with Antilochus in early yeah, yeah. early WCW, right, he was actually slated to join the Rebellion, yeah. but Lo and Jacob ended up coming to me and saying we don't want Acid in the Rebellion. So oh, that I, didn't got, know, I didn't even know about that. <laughs> that, that got nixed at yeah. the last minute. Yeah. But um, you know that's probably because he um, didn't show up to that match. So okay. we ended up making it a three way with you and Alex challenging Brian Lowe for the championship. Yeah, but I think we made that elimination. Yes, that and Lowe retains. Yeah, it was a perfect idea. Like, Alex and I were just being a team, beating him up the entire time. I think at a few points I went for a pin, and then Alex is going, well, what are you doing? Like, like, this is like, no, we beat him up, then we pin him. It's like, okay, like, all right, fine. There was a bit of tension brewing, and then at one point Alex had him in the line table. I tried to pin Alex. Then, then hit low and finish, then I turn around, Alex eliminates me, and then Alex has eliminated himself. It's like, And then the next yeah. show, um, there's a little promo between me, you and Alex, where I you know, say I'm very unhappy with, with what happened last event. So here today, I'm going to give Antilochus an opportunity at the Backyard Championship. Now you guys play nice, because we're going to have a three-way for the Backyard Championship at this show. And um, good match. Yeah, submissions count anywhere. 
Um, we we took that. We went crazy with that match. We went around the front of the house, down the hill, back around us. It was just out of nowhere because uh, we were on the outside and out, like Jacob's just throwing me against the wall. I'm like, let's let's go all around that. Let's go around the house. It's like, like what? It's like why? Like, Especially kind of here with dickhead. Like, <laughs> <laughs> then we just go around the house and just everyone's going nuts. Like freaking John and that, just chanting like different fed names and then. Like, <laughs> It was it yeah, was a, it was so a really good match. Yeah, it's a really good and match. Then of course, and the storytelling. Yeah, the story's so good with you and Alex. Yeah, storytelling was good with me and Alex. Like Alex gets put in the uh, the clover leaf. Alex taps out, and it was an elimination. It was an elimination. So Jacob wins the title after the match. Lay Jacob out, and Ryan's like, "No, no, no! You didn't beat the champion. As far as I'm concerned, I'm still the champ." Like. And then there's a lot of turmoil yeah. going on during this time as well yeah. with Jacob. Because originally I was, um, it was supposed to, like originally we was, I think we, was, we, was, we were originally supposed to have the triple threat and then it ends up just being me and Alex and then it came back to Jacob being in the triple threat but yes. this time Jacob was going to go over. Jacob was leaving WCWA. He was, I don't know what was going on with him yeah, at the time but he was just, uh, he was unhappy with things and he wanted to leave and eventually we got him to come back and then... I decided to let swerve everyone, given the backyard title. And then we're going to the rematch to end the feud, finally, between you and Antilochus. Um, Kendo Stick Death Match. Kendo Stick Death Match. How did that idea come about, and what did you think of the match? I think it was just because, um, like, Jacob and I were talking, like, man, like... Because like, Jacob was the champion at this point, and he didn't really want to do the whole Extreme Rules thing. Yeah. And I'm thinking, what kind of, what kind of ideas can we do? Let's do, let's do something... Like, we can do something new. It's like, okay, fine. So, oh, because I was like getting weapons or something, and I got like these bamboo things from like Bunnings. And I was tying them up. I'm like, oh, check that out, Kendo sticks, and I made like so many of them. I'm, you like, made like yeah, like ninety of them. Yeah, because exactly. I just could. I was like, all right, just yeah. I, I think I just like underestimated. I think I just underestimated how many I could actually make. And I was like, Jacob, I was like, dude, look at how many fucking Kendo sticks I made. He's like. Oi, dude, we should do a kendo stick death match. I'm like, <laughs> kendo stick, that's cool, man. Let's do that. Like, yeah. I'll pitch, like, let's pitch that. And some of those kendo sticks are still floating around today. Yeah, like, somehow. <laughs> that, <laughs> that was like, like, two, two years ago. Yeah, so, like, good little match. Um, I like the whole storytelling of, um, on that day, like, Jacob came out with the, the title, his, his old title, then I came out with my title. Um, uh, yeah. Like doing the whole, you didn't beat me. I'm still holding on to this. I'm still, I'm still a champion. <laughs> like, yeah, like the whole, I like the whole storytelling with that. And we had the match. Just and then you become back my champion for a second yep. time. I think I fooled everyone there. I don't think a lot of people expected me to just win the title back, just like straight up like that. So yeah, well that was always cool. the goal plan. And got me more, got, just got me more heat really. So. Yeah, and that was good. So the feud with this, uh, with the rebellions finally passed. Um, and they're moving on to a few with the Black Carnival at the time. Um, so, this few with Alex within the Elite Alliance, it kind of dies down for a little bit. Um, I think Alex missed a couple of shows due to some other commitments. Um, but one question I did want to ask is, you know, just like I did about Mykonos, what does Alex Stone mean to the yarding career of Big Red Ryan Tate? Oh, God. Well, if you go back to ISWS, Alex, Alex, I think my time with Alex made me like, like what I am in ICWS. And then with all that chemistry and then going into WCWA, it just made me an even bigger character. It made both of us real bigger characters. We had just had that chemistry. We could work together, work together well, um, play our characters well, and just get that story across. And yeah, I, like I think without, like, I didn't have like someone like Alex to actually like feud with or like wrestle against then I wouldn't be as um, as big as I am as character wise yep um, so heading towards um, well after you've won the backyard championship where do we go from there do you remember Battle World Revolution of Sky yeah. Fusion yes that's right you, and then we you went on your belt and then we went on to the I think it was the wedding wasn't it was the next show Christmas Carnage <laughs> yeah, okay so we get right. to the crude wedding um, your thoughts on that Oh, how, that was the that was such a fucking great segment. The whole like even the ba- the bachelor party at fir- first earlier in the day was great. Even with the unexpected uh, interference by Hank in that segment, Hank, yep. Hank the fucking dog. Hank, two months in a row, uh, he's Hank. employee of the month. Yep, 
Yep. Um, has a lot of backstage altercations with people. Um, yep, but he's never in the wrong. No, never in the wrong. Never. Then um, then later on with the whole Alex thing, you kicking him out of the EA. So then I become the best man for the wedding. Yeah. Just come out, just just standing there doing the whole announcement. Wearing your nice little suit. And, yeah. And we've got, we got gotta Johnny play, B gotta and Nick Ariel and Just Mike out there as my uh, groomsman. You're the best man. Lila's the uh, maid of honour. And and I get my real life girlfriend Belinda to come out and be a part of it. And Alex ruins the whole thing, which was amazing. Dick, um, fuck you. And Alex. then of course from there we move to Resolution. <sighs> and to start the show off, we've got Still Kemsley's um, dance party. And through that, Alex Stone makes the save for Acid getting a possible beatdown. But in the end, Acid. Nails Alex in the back with a steel chair, joins the Elite Alliance. What did you think of Acid joining our group to replace Alex Stone? I think you told me about this idea about maybe a day or two before, and I was just losing my shit. I was so excited for it, because it, I knew it would just build Acid into such, like... And it completely changed huge, It did. It completely changed Instead it. Instead of sitting at the shows, yeah. being quiet and by himself, he was, just, he was yeah. a full-fledged member of the roster, and... Turning heel made him really more interested in doing it. Yeah, and I think like in a way, like even though he was a heel, he was still a more lovable character now because everyone was like, "Oh shit, it's acid." Well, everyone like, loved. All him eyes on. All eyes were on acid because he's yeah. the black guy. We he has to be about. We being finally black, got a yeah. black guy. He's a black guy. We finally got he has, a black guy. And he guy. had a sick afro. Well, yeah, we all love black guys. Yeah. Um, like, black so guys are sick. When do I let you know that your opponent for Resolution 2 is going to be Mike Del Cano? He's been away in Israel for a year. When do you find out and how do you guys plan your match? Because he's not going to show up until the actual mm. moment when he comes out to wrestle you. Well, I actually found out by Mike Del Cano. I did find out by you originally. Okay, so yeah, I never told he, you. He told me it was about... Um, I think he asked around Around the time... I ran Frostbite, I think, was what I found out from Mike. So this is about like, that was like September, so it's about four or five so months. So this, this idea had been going yeah. for ages. Ages. So his, his return would be to beat you for the title. Yeah. And we were just, just when it came up to about two or three weeks beforehand, we were just planning non-stop yeah. about what we were going to do in this match. And like, he was going to come out as a surprise. We get to the match... Everything's gone smoothly. JD Flame comes out. He cops a beat down. Uh, and then this ominous music plays. And then suddenly you just hear the the um, Where'd Holly, you go? Hollywood Undead music play. And you're like, ah, oh, shit. Like, that little fucking Jew. <laughs> and then what happens? He trips over. Fucking hell. <laughs> like, vintage Mike Del Cano. He has to. When it, when, big match feel. Big event. Has to trip over. Has to screw over. up somehow. Has to screw up somehow. And um, unbelievable. But he, you know, he saved him. He yep, saved, saved face him. Yep, quickly. Saved. And then he got back up and everyone was like, holy shit. <coughs> Del Cano's <laughs> back. And then you guys have an incredible match. Yeah. Like, we have, we were planning, we were planning. Like, we were even going to meet up and actually see each other before the show. But Mike was like, yeah, yeah, nah, or whatever. I don't know what was going on. We just, he just cancelled on plans. So, like, all right, whatever. So, because I could see, when I was standing there in the ring, just seeing him just behind the the curtain, I could see him, I was like, oh man, like, fuck, fuck, like, I haven't, I haven't seen this guy, I haven't actually talked to him face to face, I'm about to have this match, and I'm, like, freaking, thoughts are going through my head, like, oh, did, what, 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 what was the start, what was the finish, what was this, what was that, what spot were we yeah. doing, like, all this shit going on, and then we had the match, and it just flowed perfectly, did great stuff. Um, freaking hanging DDTs on the chairs. Um, he did a tar- he pulled off a tarantula. Um, and then the um, the ending to the match where he had me in the uh, the cobra clutch with the leg scissors. And I'm just doing the whole like if you look back like Triple H, John Cena esque like just the Triple H just slow tapping like just giving yeah. up. And then everyone's just losing their shit. Like, oh, fuck. Yeah, so it's big debut. He comes back, yeah. you put him over. Yeah. And you do a good job at it. Um, later on the show, we have an incident that takes place, which takes you out of action for several months. Um, GBYW and... No. Yeah, actually, GBYW and Hall of Famer, Australian Backyard Wrestling Hall of Famer, Rusty shows up for his lone match in WCWA where he faces yours truly in a match that no one thought they'd ever see. 
uh, during that match, just in the opening parts of the match, he does a dive to the outside onto all of the Elite Alliance, and through that, you manage to bugger up your shoulder. So what happened? Basically, so we were backstage just before the match. We were talking about what was going on, and Rusty comes up and says, okay, guys, I'm um, just letting you know I'm going to be doing a dive. You cool? You guys all cool to catch me? I'm like, yeah, cool, whatever. And because um, the guys catching us, it was um, me, Zeppelin, and Acid, like, so Zeppelin and I, I was a bit hesitant because like we're the smaller guys. Yeah. Acid, he'd be fine. He's a big black guy. So yeah, he's black. Yeah, he's black. Like, so and um, just like just watching the match at the start, it was like awesome to see just Rusty just like killing it, and then like out he like arm drags you to the outside. I'm like okay, here we fucking go. Here comes the dive. And I didn't know what kind of dive he was gonna do. Yeah, <laughs> I wasn't expecting a fucking backflip from the big dude. <laughs> Um, he, cu- he just runs the ropes, comes back, just flips over the rope with the greatest of ease and, like, all of his weight on top of my left shoulder. Just yeah. crashing down and instant pain. Like, I fell back, stood, sit right back up. I just couldn't feel anything in my shoulder or my arm and I didn't know what was going on. And then, like, the pain just shot through. I had no fucking clue what was going on. Guys, like... Chaos and Jack came up to me. He was like, "Are you alright, man?" I'm like, "No, God, help me up!" <laughs> and then, so help me up. I just went backstage, sat down for a bit. I was like, "Fuck!" Like, couldn't couldn't comprehend like what had happened. Like, I was in so much pain. Like, I've never like never had an injury at all in my entire life. Yeah, like nothing like like this or anything like that. And um, I came back out for the match, just managing. You could see me in the footage, just trying to stretch my shoulder out. I because. At this point, it was like dislocated, and I didn't even realize. Oh, I didn't really? know it. It was dislocated, and like, and then um, when after the match, I was just sitting down um, next to Lily. It was like, it was like one match after, like halfway through, suddenly my arm just pops back into place. Really? It was the, and I was like, fuck, like so much pain, <laughs> Shit. and it was just bothering me like the rest of the day and then because I knew that we had to do ICWS the very next day and I was oh, in a tag match wrestled. I was like alright taped my shoulder up I was in a tag team with you yeah that's right I went there first thing I said when we were planning I said to Monet and Jack please do not go after my left shoulder what does Monet fucking do he just grabs my arm stomps the fuck out of the shoulder and it's killing me and um yeah so I was out for a while and I went to, like, doctors and that, and they, they did, like, an ultrasound and stuff on it, and they said that I was so close to tearing something in my shoulder. Like, it was, like, so close to tearing, like, some kind of ligament yeah. or, or a tendon or something. And they said, oh, okay, so you, you what you want to do is, just, like, stay in, stay in a sling when you go out, when you go to work, do light duties. Like, if you're at home, you don't have to have the sling on, just make sure you just do little stretches of your arm or something. Yeah. Um... Yeah, and they gave me like they said, "Oh, you'd be good in about maybe three, five weeks, like five weeks day before combat crisis." Okay. And my match was going to be a tables match. I'm like, "Yeah." As much as I hated to do it, because I would have hated, hated to be off a show, the first show I've ever been off, and I was like, "I can't do it. Can't wrestle that show." Yeah. But I still came and watched the show, and I was just sad the entire day I was watching all, everyone just killing it in the ring and I was just knowing that I wasn't going to be doing it as well yeah so so what's the process when you rehab the shoulder what do you how do you um, attack this um basically at this point I like it was just getting like sore and stuff it was just really sore and I couldn't really do much with my arm yep and at some point, I was like, okay, well, they haven't, the doctors didn't really tell me how to rehab it, so I'm going to rehab it the best way. Just, like, get on the weights, get on the boxing bag, do stuff, just stretch shoulder out as much as I can most of the time. And it was fine. Um, and it came to, like, a, some an, like an anniversary with a girl, with Lily, and I knew I was going to, I was going to miss the, um, the show Pro Wrestling, which I would have been good for, but I couldn't make it, so... So I was out in Fremantle, and um, so I was just rehab, trying to rehab my shoulder my own way. Well, you were on a little training regime, weren't you? I was a on a training regime. You lost I made a bit my of weight too. Yeah, I, yeah, I made a little training regime for myself because I thought maybe that's maybe this would be the best way to do it. 
I remember you sent it to me because I was like, you know what, I want to get on a training regime too. Yeah. And the last time I looked at it was the first time I looked at it. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> I haven't done it since. So we did a little angle where um, you handed in your EA shirt and you said you didn't know what how you were going to feel when you got back. Yeah, yeah, obviously, yeah. it was all bullshit. Yeah, because I wanted to see how I could go fooling people to think I was going to be face again, but then in the end come back and be a heel and see if people actually kind of believed it and see the reaction with it. Because I still wanted to try and be involved somehow with something. Yeah in WCWA even though I couldn't actually wrestle and so I'm bullshitting in my promo yeah. saying Ryan Tate won't answer my phone calls you well, know I didn't, I, didn't really. I don't know what's going on blah 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 and then um, well what's the show you do come back Hard Time 3 Hard Time 3 what a show so many things went down so we'll get to those things down. later but your return match against guess who Mykonos. Of all people, had to, had to be Mykonos. So Mykonos had just entered the feud with the Elite Alliance. Del Cano was involved, JD Flame was involved, Alex Stone was involved, and now we've got Mykonos involved as well. Um, so how do you feel that one went? After so many great matches, you get to have another one in 2014. Um, well, I think originally, like, when... Because when, I was talking to you about lots, like, lots of things about... Um, what was going on with the, you told me about what's going on with the show and how originally it was going to be a number one contender match with the Australian title yeah and I'm like okay cool this is probably just still happening so I come out and I'm supposed to do some kind That's of right, some yeah. kind of promo and I mention it and then oh yeah you're just going to have a normal singles match I'm like oh, okay whatever That's right. I'm like, I didn't even know what was, was going on I was in there and I was like no, great you... idea great yeah, idea yay yay what a great idea not happening you don't make these matches, me. I do. <laughs> you can <laughs> fight each other. That's it. <laughs> like not for one, no more contenders. Just for sake of competition. It. Just for just, just fight each other. That's it. So we did. Um, it's pretty good. Like I, it's where I, uh, we, we um went through. We, no, what's what's the fucking word? <sighs> poo. No, not poo. not poo. Not not this time. Okay. <laughs> Um, we incorporated the whole like the whole idea that we know each other so well, the whole mindset we had reversal after reversal. Yeah, okay. And then in the end we just did we did this whole the whole um Mania twelve Iron Man the end of the Iron Man match, the Sean Michael spot where just both guys are crawling up, Mitch is crawling up in the corner, I just charge Mitch, he just comes in super kick, oh, just super one, kick, two, three. one, two, three. And, and then, people like, what the fuck? Like, right, like one Brian the win. Like, yeah, it's not way. That's not how the way it goes. Like, I'm. That's what I like to do. I like to, like, return a lot. Like, I put people over if I want to. Like, yeah, but I'm fine with it. I don't. I don't mind losing at all. No, you that's know? certainly always the case. Ryan, I need you to do double duty and put over this guy. Okay, it always seems to happen. Um, number so, one, number one thing. Just number one thing I've learnt, like, just doing this is, don't argue with the fucking booker. That's right. That's what you do. You that's don't argue the book. Right. You hear that, you cunts. Like that sounds like sucking. You hear that it may name? sound like sucking dick, but it's actually true. You don't fuck with. The, you don't argue with the booker because they're your life in in like anything. Like yeah, pro you hear or that, you are. fuckers. So, you hear that, Monet? Even though you're in the booking committee, I get the final word. Me, <laughs> Brown. Um, okay, yeah. so what happens after the match? You turn heel yep. again. Yep, turn heel again. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, what was go- what happened is um, everyone's like. Zeppelin, yourself, and Acid, who had only just rocked up at that point of the day at the show, just rocks up. Oh yeah, man, come out for the segment. Oh, it's sick, bro. Okay, yeah. Now, then out they come. They surround the ring. Mitch and I back to back. Like, oh, we need to fight these guys off. Oh, Ryan's gonna fight the EA. Fuck that. Turn around. Lay Mitch out with spine buster. Like heel turn again. Ah, oh, here we go. And then beat down and shoes. Beat down. Grab the mic. Just say. I fooled you all, just like the EA always does, and like to, and I did a little hint that was was happened later on in the show, like just was saying we will fool you every single time, and you will never see it coming. That's, yeah, and then that was the, that was the that was the nail in the coffin of what was to happen later on yeah, in the main event. Planting the seed once again, yeah. you know, putting doubt in people's minds. I'm not sure, and I'm not sure if a lot know? of people realize that I actually gave a little hint to that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And what do you know, during the main event of Hard Time 3, we've got Badass Bladeshaw coming Fuck out. Fuck yeah. 
knocking Alex Stone out of the chair. Dan Zeffen wins the heavyweight championship. Blade Shaw joins the Elite Alliance. And another significant event, Alice also joins the Elite Alliance. So we've got the two girlfriends of... Uh, I think there's about eight of us. At, is, that, is that eight of us? You've got me, you, Zeppelin, Blade, Lila... Alice and Alice Acid at seven. And Acid, yeah. So, yeah, so seven, seven, you know, we all, well, eight soon. Cause this, oh, yeah, yeah, This yeah. was the same show Nick Ariel came back. But what a great ending to the show. And the Elite Alliance standing tall. Standing tall, all of us. It's like, oh. That was probably the, the high point of the Elite Alliance, I'd it, say. EA has gotten so huge at this point. And you just like, they're just mowing for everyone. Yeah. It's like... And the next few months were pretty tough. Um, I was... Yeah certainly uh, burned out because our roster had just exploded. We now had Brandon Cage, we had Blade joining, we had Nick Ariel joining, um, you know, we still had Phaser, we had, you know, Clint Marshall and, and Del Cano had come back and the, the roster had exploded to about, you know, 27 people. Hydro was even there for a little while. So with all of this going on, I knew that I was starting to get burned out. So I had been hanging out with Blade a little bit after he debuted, and uh, we've been talking about, you know, he, he really wants to know about booking and, and all that. We've talked about it, and I told him my ideas and how booking works, and he was really interested in, in it, and he said, you know, I'd really be interested to learn more about it and that planted the seed in my mind and then I thought well I hang out with Ryan all the time anyway and we always talk about shit anyway and Monet is like the media guy so and he's also got good ideas so he'll be a good person so why don't I form a little committee to help me out so when you found out you're going to be on the booking committee and be involved in decision making how did you feel? I was surprised you even asked me because <laughs> <laughs> well like I because I understand like as you said like you, we hang, we hung out so much and we just talked about shit and booking and stuff I was like oh because I was always really interested I always gave my own little um, ideas of what you could do and um, yeah I was like because I'd bounce off ideas off you here and there and I'd bounce them yeah. off you know yeah, and I was like, just ecstatic about it I was just, like so excited I'm like whoa like I never thought I'd be like at the point of actually helping out booking yeah like, Jesus Christ so <clears throat> With that, you know, we have a booking meeting. Um, what? How was that experience? The first booking meeting that we did. That went so well. We up to was it Blades? Blades? That's Bl- was yeah, that Blades, Blades House? house. Yeah. We were pounding the beers. Yeah, pounding well, the I beers. was pounding the beers. <laughs> you were pounding the beers. We, we all had a bit to drink. Blade but... was Blade was on his diet or something at that point. Um, and we just went through like making up the cards and and like this, like who's going to doing this and we. Did like all the, the final, um, just all to work towards Resolution Three, which was going to be like the show. Yeah, like if you thought Resolution yeah. Two was anything, wait till you see what we got in store. And that card that fuck, we had set what? six months, seven months in advance was insane. What a fuck! Show. Like and a lot little, of things. Little did we yeah. know that we were actually going to be adding NC Viper later. Like on. a lot of things changed on that card. Oh, totally. Fuck. They change all yeah. the time, you know. Yeah, like but there was so much good. Like, so much good shit. <laughs> Just Hap- all positive, really. Yeah, all positive with that. Um, Alright, so after you, you know, you joined the booking committee, and I've made the decision that, you know, the franchise's long reign as tag team champions will be coming to an end. And this is as the uh, Del Cano feud, the JD Flame feud, uh, well, no, not the JD Flame feud, the Mykonos feud, um, and Alex Stone feud. They're all starting to come to an end now, but we need something to move on towards to get to Resolution 3. Um, so during this time I make the decision that you and Blade are going to become tag team champions just to get the tag titles in the Elite Alliance Um, so you and Blade as a tag team your thoughts on your run as a tag team um, and we'll get to the specifics on Franchise and Circus Royale after this but when you first heard I thought like at first I thought okay this is going to be interesting like being like a tag team like with someone who's completely different style and how we're gonna how how it's gonna work when we do actually start having tag matches, and when we did, it was just the like best like mix of stars, like Blade being the like the big strong guy. I think maybe more of the kind of like the little workhorse of of the team. But we still put <coughs> yeah. on like so like we both like you bring the sizzle, a, he, bro- he brings the steak. Exactly. 
Well put. <laughs> well, very well put. <laughs> yeah, and we just put over the whole thing of being a team, like hitting the the elbow drop, side slam, every single tag match. Yeah, like, always putting, putting, over putting it over. Like, just putting it over that we're just a dangerous team that had that, that had to be, we reckon with or whatever. You can, yeah. Don't cross them because... Yeah, we'll just like run through ev- anyone that we need to. Yeah. Um, and how the whole um, tag match was planned out, I thought it went well. The whole um, single elimination match. Yep. Um, no, except for the whole thing with me accidentally knocking Jack out. Um, um, yes. Yeah. And like how it ended was perfect because we even involved Lily, and it just it just uh, showed like how much of a team this they actually are yeah like Lily distracting the ref Ryan coming in kicking DK in the face Blade capitalising getting the getting the power bomb, getting the win for the team winning the tag titles yeah it was a good moment uh, good to see Blade pick up a win to win a championship um, so early in his career in WWA um, so you're the tag team champions what's it like working against the franchise oh great both both really good workers Jack Jack and Mono. Um, Mono Mon and Jack just this just so fucking like so naturally talented. Um, yeah, I don't even know what to say. Fucking um, <laughs> lost, kind of lost for words. Uh, you know, is yeah, it easy yeah, planning Jack. a match with the franchise? Yeah, it's so easy planning a match with them because they always pick up like good, good little ideas that they can incorporate into into matches. Um, uh, f- like. But one thing I find is like with Jack Hayes, Hayes like oh a little burned out, but he says like he has like bad like bad matches. He looked back at him and like oh like you do fucking great, dude. Yeah, <laughs> like, that was good matches. So it's like so like so so good to work with them. Yeah, like, especially like with the whole you know, with that whole tag match where we won the titles and then the clash of the triads where Acid was their partner. And he walked out and they had like overcome three other people. Yeah, it was so good working with them throughout this whole throughout the whole thing, and then even like. Even the whole um, combination at Resolution. Yeah. As well. That was also yeah. good. Um, so, from there, well, you know, you're working with the franchise, um, but during this, I'm still feuding with Alex Stone. There's supposed to be a dog collar match between yourself and Alex Stone yeah. before he's to yeah. get an actual title yeah. match against Dan Zeppelin. I think this was the show, the dog collar match was the show before we won the tag title. Was it? Okay. Yeah. Once Rampage. again, me getting the timeline mixed up. That's but right. um, now Alex had to drop out because of a family. Uh, emergency. Yeah, um, I think a, so I think a at the last member minute, passed away or something like that. Yep. So yeah. at the last minute, we had you versus Luke Manet, then yeah. known as Dynamo. Was he then? I don't know. He was still Dynamo. Was he point. still Dynamo? This was or? the. This was like the second, second or third last show he was as Dynamo. Okay, so great, great little dog collar match there. How was it wrestling a dog collar match for the first time? Oh, it was kind of difficult because I didn't really judge how long the chain actually was because you're just constantly getting tugged at the neck and it's so fucking annoying. <laughs> but because I saw like how... Because originally I watched back how scre- at the Scream and Shinigami um, Black Carnival Playground match. Yeah. At, uh, at Battle War. Yeah. And I thought, well, they've got... They've been tied... They've been chained to the neck. Why not use the chain as an actual weapon? Yeah. First thing I did with that chain is just grab it and hit it as hard as I could in, in the ribs of, of Mono and everyone was just like oh fuck that's such a good pop like just hitting him with the chain choking him with the chain did just... you do any research yeah. beforehand and watch some dog collar matches I tried watching matches that involved a chain like I tried watching like the Brock Lesnar the Undertaker biker chain match I'm like okay cool they're going to do this whole thing it's like oh they have to cl- oh it's just they got to climb the, the corner grab the chain and then use it and that was it yeah like, the end of the match was was Brock Lesnar grabbing the chain, punching on Taker in the face, and pinning him? I'm like, well, that fucking helped, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I didn't really see a lot of dog collar matches. I just you just, you just knew that you had to implement it, the uh, implement the dog collar. Yeah. Like. Um, all right. So from there, um, I just want to just a few thoughts on the match with Brandon Cage and Still Kemsley working with Brandon Cage and obviously his ultimate uh, departure from WCWA. Um, it was really like. It's really like weird, like trying to plan with Brandon because he always came up with different ideas. There, because I had thought of a like a like a solid plan for the like the finish of the match, 
and Brandon's like, oh, um, oh, I want to do this thing. I want Aston to jump in the ring and hit me with a glass bottle. I'm like, why the fuck would you want to get bottled? <laughs> and he's like, oh, no, no, I'm going to get, like, fake glass and shit. I'm like, good luck with that. Yeah. And just... Obviously, no. Yeah, happened. just... No, it didn't happen at all. There were so many different, like... And I would have been like, no. No. I'm like, of course, you're going to say... I don't like, need to get involved with that. I don't like need that. to get... It was just... It was just like planning things that didn't really, that didn't really make sense that didn't need to be in there like unnecessary things. Yeah. So maybe um, you reckon he didn't get it. I don't think he did, and I think another thing that really pissed me off was that he said to me, um, he said, "Oh, on like he was on it was me and him just messaging each other. And he's like, oh, when it comes to doing um spots, can like can you just like keep steel spots to a minimum?" I'm like, why? I just said to him straight up, why? And he said, oh, because he didn't really do that well on the Clash of Triads. I'm like, fuck off. Like, how dare you? Like, Steel's been here for longer than you have. He's doing great. Like, yeah, he has a few stuff ups now and then, but he's, like, you put him with, like, people and actually give him a chance to work, then he'll get better. You can't just yeah, keep him on the side and not protect, do anything. You can't protect yeah. him too much. It's not like we're EPW and yeah. we've got a paying crowd or something. Yeah. It's backyard wrestling. You can't yeah. protect him because then he'll never learn. You've got to get yeah. him out there and you've got to put him in a situation yeah. where he's going to have yeah. to think for himself. Yeah. How's he supposed to get better if you're not going to make him do exactly. anything? Exactly. Right? So that, that's just counterproductive, really. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you know it was an alright match. You look at the ma- you look at the, the stuff in that match. Well, still still got still was in there majority of the time. Like he got more, he did a couple, like pretty much more stuff than Brandon did, and he did great. Yeah, like went for a fame master. I called him midair, German him. Like it was awesome. Blade Blade got in there, did it, and just laying out Brandon. Like yeah, but it was good. Good little match. Um, quite enjoyed it. Don't, didn't really get the whole thing with me getting hit with Brandon's finisher and then suddenly no, no selling, selling it, it and then putting him in the ankle lock and making him tap out. So, but you know, he, he just yeah, yeah it, it was just he didn't do himself any favors there. No, by having his finishing move get no sold. But. Yeah, it was just um, it just put his finishing move over his week. Yeah, which I didn't like. Um, all right, so around this time there's a <clears throat> excuse me, um, a new joining in the Elite Alliance. Nick Ariel joins. Um, there's a lot of problems with me and him at this time, um, because he's he's doing this thing with John with the revolution, oh. and I never okayed it, but they still wanted to do it anyway. So I'm like, come on, you got to be there earlier so you can be a part of the segments with the Elite Alliance earlier in the show. He's he's a bit of a pain to deal with at times, um, but you know he seems to get away with it with me because I love him. <laughs> um, you know, I've been best friends with him for years now, so. You know, I let him and John get away with Moida. Moida. Um, when it came to booking with WCWA. But, you know, your thoughts on him joining the Elite Alliance? Just, like, who else? Like, like why not? Like, you have to have these, like, these guys who have been there. They've been to the top. They have all these accolades behind them. Hence why Elite Alliance. Perfect spot for them to be in. And it just pisses everyone off more. Because yeah. you're bringing in more people. And, like, the segment we did... On the day with him coming out and apparently facing Blade, getting poked in the throat and just doing the whole, oh, my shirt's too tight, takes off EA. Like, yeah. so many people pissed yeah. off. Pissed them off. And that was Especially good. Barrett. Especially <laughs> Barrett. Oh, of course. He's just, he's <laughs> complaining to me behind the scenes about yeah. how um, oh, the Elite Alliance is coming like the NWO. And I'm like, that's exactly what I'm going for. You know? Like, I want it to get disgusting, I want it to get annoying. I want myself like, to be annoyed by yeah, it. Because that, that was... Because I think you told me about that. Because people were getting, like, legitimately sick of yeah, seeing it. Yeah. That's what we That's want. What we wanted. We That's wanted, the fucking point. We wanted so. legitimate, you know, illness. Yeah. So when it came place. to the part... When it came to the point where EA ended, it was just, like, a giant, like, relief. Relief. Yeah, and, and, and we didn't have yeah. much time left, so yeah. we, I, like, I wanted every, it to like, become overbearing. Yeah, we had to get it overbearing as possible, yeah. and then so it could just blow up. Really. Yeah. So um, from there, uh, around this time, another guy, Hydro, has popped in for a cup of coffee, just to have a couple of matches in WCWA. Got to have him and Ariel for the first time in eight years. Him and Blade got to have a little bit of a thing. 
Um, he got to be in the Clash of the Triads tournament, but he also got to have one of his real solid singles matches against you. So what was it like wrestling a guy who hadn't really wrestled in a long time? He's come in for a little bit. I was just super keen on that I was getting to face an XCW guy. I was just waiting for him. I'm like, I'm not going to face an XCW guy. Like, you've got Nick here, you've got fucking John here. You've got fucking, like, it's kind of like Pokemon. Yeah. You've got to catch them all. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Great yeah. reference. <laughs> and some people, you know, like... like yeah. You know, Dan Dan Zeppelin's had the chance to wrestle me, Blade, and Nick. So he's just got one more to catch. Yeah. And then he's completed the whole set. Yeah. He's just got to wrestle John, and then he's completed the whole set. Yeah. But Hydro's another one, so it was a good, yeah. real real good match. Yeah, it was good, he, like... It was a good showing for Hydro. Because when we were playing the match, because Hydro, he watches the kind of... Um, he kind of watches... We were into the kind of the same kind of wrestling. Yeah. We were watching, like, Pete, like... Pro Wrestling Gorilla at the time. Like, we were watching, we were, like, trying to incorporate, like, kind of things, like doing like a, a giant flurry of moves which I incorporated into that match and doing like different stuff like yeah freaking like duck like go for a clothesline duck the clothesline take a take a rush in those three get up hydro charges me grab him belly to belly into the corner like, yeah that kind of that kind of crazy like sequences and stuff yeah, yeah. You, you know you saw, I saw a new side of you in that match especially yeah. with that that hot flurry you did during the match yeah like I, I think at this at this point in like in yarding I'm starting to actually evolve a bit more and change like change things I feel like I felt like I've been doing the same kind of stuff usually because I brought I started bringing him doing the ankle lock I started doing these new flurries of moves and I change it up sometimes it's not always the same thing when you see it um yeah <laughs> um yeah but working with Hydra was great it was just it match flowed match flowed well um it was just really fun to work with him it was like the, to know someone who was like really into the same kind of style and uh, styles clashed well and like I hadn't even seen any of his previous stuff, so I didn't and know his what previous to stuff yeah. does ha has nothing to do really yeah. with, with his WCWA run because he yeah. was a kid. Yeah. Like he was, you know, he was only like eleven, twelve years old. Um, so from there, you well, we let's just get to it. You guys dropped the tag team titles to Circus Royale after an eighteen month journey. They finally got there and they won the tag team titles. So what was it like working with Circus? And Obviously, you were happy to put them over. I was so happy to put them over the minute I found out about it, which was like a couple of months earlier. You you have said, "All right, this is the this is the the plan leading forward. You're gonna win the tag titles. You're gonna have a couple of defenses. Then you're gonna find then you're gonna put over Circus Royale after that 18 month journey." I'm like, "Yes, fuck yes!" Like I because I I've worked with Kyle before, but never D, DK. So when it came to the the match and I was just think sit at home thinking like how the, how the hell do we make this like as good like such a great thing like you gave me an idea of how the finish should go but then I kind of incorporate something else I'm like okay so they're feuding with AAA at this point mm. so why not have AAA come in when the ref is down and just try to fucking screw them out of it and everyone's gonna hate it but but then to put over the fact that They've been fighting so long. They're so resilient. They need the win. They're fighting for it. Like D DK Joker's kicking out of the like tag team finishes while Kyle's out on the outside. Kyle comes back and then they just end up laying out Blade, laying me out, getting the win. Everyone just loses their shit. I was so happy, so proud for them. Yeah. And hence why, like after, but you know, there's no, there's, wouldn't see it on YouTube. But I gave a little speech afterwards. I said like, oh yeah, I know that like Dark Ice and Aston did this kind of thing before but I've been wanting to do this ever since I found out and I just said to them but you fucking deserve it you guys never bitched you never moaned you just went with anything we were doing and they just they really deserved it they really deserved cardboard they did they yeah, deserved they, that they cardboard deserved, they deserved after cardboard. 18 months you, that, that means cardboard yeah well deserved boys yeah it, 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 you know to flip yeah. that over it's like yeah. we they had 18 months of wiping their ass with cardboard and finally yeah. they got given toilet paper yeah that's a nice little uh, way to compare it not really, but uh, <laughs> uh, during this time, around this era, the, the Clash of the Triads takes place and we're getting Lily to wrestle more. So what are your thoughts on, on Lily getting the opportunity to wrestle a bit more? At first she wasn't really hesitant about it, but then I was just saying, okay, like, like when you're going to be in, in it, you're like, not, you're like, we're still putting you away as a strong competitor, so you're not going to really take like, bumps or anything like that. So pretty much just go in there, clean fucking house. Yeah. And when it came to Clash of the Triads, we had all I had this stuff planned for her to do. Like she had about like four main spots in the match, and she did about one or two. Yeah, because there was some miscommunication with what was going on. Someone in the match, 
said over to the ref, like, oh, yeah, look, yeah, we're, tell them let's end it. And the match went for about, like, eight minutes. Yeah. And, and well, she didn't really she get didn't, the chance to She didn't to get much shine. in, and I was like, oh, okay. Because I, I thought that you were outside and said, oh, yeah, just finish the match up now. I was like, okay, but the it was cars. And then I just, I got rolled up by Jack, and then afterwards, and then watching the other Clash of the Triads matches... And um, they were going, these matches were going for like a good 15, almost 20 minutes. And I'm just sitting there. I'm just like sad, really, because I'm just thinking, wow, like, we could have, like, gotten so much more time in that match and we could have gotten more across. And yeah. Yeah, it was. Didn't, it's a bit uh, disappointing. It felt really disheartened because I didn't feel satisfied. And it was like the first time ever I felt dissatisfied with what I had done at a show. But that all helped because the very next show I had two matches in a row. So yes, but I felt but I felt particularly bad for Lily because she wanted to do the stuff, and then because she had come up to me because she because she was like, "Oh, what happened to the stuff we were going to do?" I'm like, I couldn't I couldn't explain what to her what was what happened because I even I didn't know. So yeah, um, yeah. All right. Well, um, <clears throat> yeah. Around this time, you you being you you become the go to guy whenever someone doesn't show up. Yeah. Um, this happens on more than one occasion. Am I right? It was two times. There was the one with, there was one at um, the musical where versus Hydro, and then the same day we lost the tag titles. I had to fill in again. Yeah, yeah. So, so you ended up having to wrestle Mykonos. Yeah. So that's the fifth time. Yep, that was the fifth time I faced Mykonos one on one. Yep. Because um, it was supposed to, it was GBYW an Australian title and Acid. Acid has not been there since. He hasn't been there since. So your supposed... thoughts on Acid kind of bailing on WCWA? I was really, really annoyed because he was supposed to be... He was. He's had such a great run. And you know that at one point you have to eventually drop the title at some point, or like some point, like sooner or later. And like got the Gentleman's Duel and he was supposed to drop the title and was and he's going to get main event as well. Like, what more do you want? Yeah. So then I, so then um, he didn't show up, and I was like so annoyed. And Mitch, Mitch was pretty annoyed because at this point everyone in the show had left. There yeah. was like no crowd, and, and I knew what this felt like because the the, the previous show I was supposed to first free dog, and I had to leave it. I had to leave it at a certain point because I had a ride, my ride coming, and Aaron was like, like two, like a, an hour or two away, and I had to get it done. So I had the most chaos, and we had like z- little to no crowd at all, but they had like make as much noise as they could and make it seem big and we had to do the same thing when it came to me and Mitch but we still put on a great match still put every little bit of effort into it it didn't really phase phase me or him yeah so. well um yeah you, you helped put him over he finally yeah. got the championship that he'd been chasing for you know seven or eight months um so from there we go to uh you know Christmas Carnage um and I'm having a hard time remembering exactly what took place there. Um, so should I, should I, uh, aside from that, you know, I mean, yeah, we did the the little angle with me and you yeah. where I beat the shit out of you. Um, what did you think of the um, that segment anyway? Where I, I think it was really good because it actually showed the whole thing of oh, is that Aston's beginning to snap a bit? He's just like oh, starting to lose like, his shit. Like Ryan, you're a go-to guy. You lost this, you lost that. Like you couldn't get it done. I'm like, well, you put me in two matches and I had a fucking bum shoulder anyway, so it's kind of your fault. <laughs> yeah. And So you end up taking yeah. a beating from Take me. Take a beating. Were you a bit iffy yeah. about the segment idea? I, I just wanted to say a promo back to you. Like, yeah. I, instead of just saying that the whole, just do what I deserve. I wanted to say a promo back to you. I was fine with it. Yeah. First time I ever took a power bomb, which is crazy because it's like <laughs> it's for like three years, and that's the first time I take a power bomb. Well, what's like taking how? place now with you and Blade? I'm sure you're gonna have to take another one. Oh god damn it! <laughs> <laughs> um, so what, what let's uh, let's talk about resolution. Um, the initial idea was actually you and Jack in a singles match, Monet versus Acid in a singles match. If they won both those matches, then. Franchise and JD Flame would face me, Dan, and Blade in a three in a six man tag. Sorry, um, but you know, Acid didn't show up, so I thought, well, let's just make this a four on three handicap match and forget about the singles matches. So here it is, the uh, the big showdown, the end of the Elite Alliance. Going into it, are you? Do you feel a little bit sad that the Elite Alliance is gone? Not at all. I think it's not a better time to have it just. Like, just right off into the sunset, really. Yeah. And what a better 
place to do it. Like, Resolution Free, we've had such a fucking great show up to this point. Like, we had Viper, uh, had the freaking, uh, had, like, uh, the Young Lions. Yeah. Um, Lily had her, had her first singles match one-on-one. We had a freaking video game match. So much, so much good stuff. Um, like Marshall and Delcano. Yeah. And, like, because I, because I was talking to you and Blade and Monet saying, how the fuck are we ever going to talk? Because I knew it was coming, like, we yeah. in our match. Like, we were, I said to him, we're never going to top this show. Like, I, I used to believe it. We, we, there's no way we're going to top this show. And I think we knew with Diffuser doing, being a part of the segment, yeah. I think I knew that yeah. that would at least, if the match wasn't that great, yeah. Diffuser's, yeah. uh, you know, involvement would save it, but um, yeah, and it came up to the match, and I was just getting like it, just the adrenaline pumping, and then when me and Monty were planning that because we were supposed to meet up at the start, and I said, we, so me and Monty like mutually agreed, let's let's just try not to stiff each other like we always do, and we're like, okay, all right, cool, cool. So we get out there, just face off. Mono's just like, sup, fuckhead? And I just forearmed him right in the face, break his nose. And break the, his the nose. The first shot of the match. Let's not be stiff on each other, then you break, break his, his nose. nose. It's kind of like when Oops. you told him, don't go after the shoulder. Yeah. And then he went after yeah. the shoulder. So maybe that was yeah, the ma- Yeah, maybe that was it, Mono. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, maybe that's that's Fuck. what you get for being brown. 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 brown broken like nose. Like poo. Exactly like poo. Yeah. All right, so we do it. Great end. Yeah, there you go. There, there, there's that. That's it. That's it, Monty. That's that's why I did it. There you go. That's yeah. the reasoning. So it's a great next time. Little lights, time. Ryan. Yep. Um, jolly good. Yeah, and I was um, trying not to mark out when the lights went out and like the music plays out. Comes to fuse. I'm like, I'm just like, yes. I'm gonna take a fucking choke something for a fucking table. I just rolled out of there, ran <laughs> after him, and then just got just. And I didn't even like the only thing that hit the table was my head. I mean, Nothing just, else, just like... thinking about it, it's insane to think that Diffuser choke slammed you. Yeah, like, like looking back on it, like everyone should feel honoured that you know, considering yeah. how there's no chance really. Of, I mean, I'm going to try, <laughs> but you know, the whole time we're doing WCW, it's been impossible to get him involved or with anything. I couldn't think of any real ideas except for this one. He was into the idea, and just the fact that you know he power bombs Dan Zeppelin. He Nick, he gives Nick Ariel a choke slam. Power bomb, power bomb, death on Dan Zeppelin. Yeah, and then you know <laughs> he, he he gives you a choke slam. I mean, yeah. the fact that he actually took a choke slam to, from yeah. Diffuse is pretty cool, I think. Um, so from there we take a little bit of a break uh, with WCWA. I hated that. During this break, there was a lot of turmoil going on where it looked like we might have been having to move venue, and there were a lot of issues going down. So how did you feel during that time? Well, with the whole thing with the new venue, I was like, okay, so it's going to possibly be in Baldivis. So I was just, I just wanted to wrestle. Like, mm. plain and simple, I just wanted to wrestle because it's just one thing I've just always, always loved doing. Like, I need to get away. I need to get to the, where I can talk to all these guys about, like, wrestling. Cause that's what I'd love to talk about. Yeah. And that's, that just seems like that's just getting slowly ripped away. And then when. Jack did the post the whole thing like it's done it's not it's done yeah he I'm actually like, said it was done at one stage because earlier I was talk I had been talking to um MC Crawl saying yeah and like tell him about it like man just like because I always said I've always been talking to him saying like if Yarding ever dies like completely because yeah. that's the only time I will stop that's the only time I'll know I'll go and do pro training yeah like don't care where it is. Fuck like, Schwa so EPW, not AAW. Schwa don't care if it's, if it's not AAW. No way. If it's Schwa EPW, I don't give a shit as long as I get to wrestle. But, so you were considering yeah, but, it at the time. Yeah, I was considering it at the time because I always made it clear to him, clear to him that when Yarling's dead, that's when I'll go train for pro. Okay. Yeah. So and that's, always, that, that still stands today. So as, you always want yeah to it, wrestle it doesn't always matter where wanna, don't, doesn't matter where doesn't matter what I get given if I ever do go pro if, like if it's shit like booking or anything I don't care I'll be like oh, that's fine I'm happy I'm here so we have hard time for um, that's a strange show because yeah. everyone's it's all up in the air still yeah, like, thank God, we like, think the next back. show is actually going to be the last show curtain call yeah. but it ends up being false finish um, so hard time 
uh, a lot of the matches on the show were a bit uh, disappointing. I was very upset with my match with Blade. I thought we could have done a hell of a lot better. But you and Dan, finally wrestling for the first time since, what, 2011? 2012? 2011. Was it late 2011? Yeah. So, uh, wrestling Dan, you guys had a solid match. Yeah. To go from, like, my third match with Dan at ICWS, like, my, like, 54th match, (laughs) and to verse him again... And I was just like so glad that WZ was WZ was staying. I'm like, oh, thank God. Yeah. And then just wrestling Dan, like the whole incorp- incorporating that. Oh, who's the better heel? Yeah. Like bringing out that stupid fucking hat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Got a good pop. I'm like, yeah, fuck you. And then, um, good little match. Yeah, good little match. Um, just would have liked it if the crowd was more lively that day. Like first the time crowd I was just so flat. Yeah, like first time, like I first time I've won with like doing my finisher and no pop. Like, I was like oh <laughs> man, like yeah, no pop for the fisherman. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. So from but there, Yolo Nugget was the star of that match too. So. Of course. Uh, from there we move on. Uh, uh, false finish. Uh, you wrestle Daniel Johnston. Um, but this is all starting this feud with Blade, which is currently yeah. uh, underway at the moment. Yeah, still going. Um, as we speak. Um, so, Elite Alliance is gone. Now you know that you and Blade might be over very soon. Um, and we've got a um, next show, Frostbite. You and Blade shall be taking on 1990 Awesome. Um, but you know your thoughts so far on the feud with Blade so far. You know it's uh, it's only just started, really. I'm loving it. The whole love, the whole love, like triangle, whatever shape you want to call it. Yeah. Going on, the whole like you have Escalito involved, you got Lila Blade, Dan Zeppelin somewhat. Yeah. Because just love it, like the whole thing, like coming out, getting in Blade's face, like you shake, shaking Dan's hand, shaking, like. DJ's hand and then out comes Escalito for no reason like what the fuck do you want comes yeah. out just talks about oh how he fell in love with Lila it's like oh, piss off <laughs> <laughs> and then you just talk about how he wants to have a match with me and then Blade talks me into the match I agree Dan costs me the match he win- Escalito wins the date and then I get in mad at Blade get mad at Lily because they didn't do anything about it and for some reason some way I think there's something going on with you two and then I'll come walk off and then I then Lily like accidentally tripping me in the match of Fusion and then I just get in the face of like Blade's trying to steal you from me like it's like because Blade's it's so, her side when you it's know, so she... like it, I find it's I love it because it's so annoying to me, but not only people who are watching as well. Because I'm like, for God's sake, Ryan, it's like, fine. So He's just your friend. Like, it's it's an interesting storyline for you it. to have. I mean, as far as the Elite Alliance at the end of it was going, it was kind of like everyone's characters were disappearing because we were all just doing the Elite Alliance thing, and it wasn't really about the character development anymore anymore that we saw yeah. in 2012 and 13 with you. Um, it was just more about the same old, same old, you know, Elite Lights business going on each and every show. Um, so, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing what takes place with you and Blade. And um, yeah, we got some um, good, good things. Um, uh, got some good things set lined up. up. Yeah, set up for the the next coming shows. Yeah, and I'm just looking forward to having having an actual like full on match with Blade. So that'd be cool. Yep. Yeah. Um, so I know we'll tear it, tear the house down. You will tear yeah. the house down. I'm yeah. sure of it. Um, I'm going to take a quick break here. Um, I need to urinate. Oh. And I need to get a couple more beers because we've got the Q&A coming up, Ryan. Oh, So sweet. I'm just going to take a little break. This will all still be within the same video, so don't turn it off yet. We're going to have a word from our sponsors uh, in between this and the next part. So, Ryan, that was your time in WCWA. I think we pretty much covered everything. Yeah, yeah we did. I mean, but, you know, we'll see. I mean, you know, we touched on Hydro and Brandon Cage and... All the various members joining the Elite Alliance. Um, so we'll get to the Q&A from the boys uh, coming up just after this. So thanks, Ryan. Yeah, and, no uh, worries. We'll be back with you very shortly, just after a word with our sponsors. Thank you. <laughs> 